This evening, let me disabuse this notion that an impeachment process is an attack of the mountain region. Mr. Speaker, an, an impeachment process is a vital process of holding public officers, state officers, accountable. Mr. Speaker, I've heard on various occasions from my colleagues, those who oppose this motion, that we are targeting the mountain. I beg to differ, and I do so with the following there findings. There is a lot of movement in the chamber, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, and pause, uh, Senator pause my time. Let's take pause our seat, time. please. And let us hear the Honorable Senator in silence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin again by saying I want to, dis to disabuse this notion that an impeachment process is an attack on of a region. It is not. It is holding. It is a constitutional process that this House has been given the task to be able to hold public officers accountable. Today, we are discussing the impeachment of a, pre of a deputy president. Tomorrow, we might be discussing the impeachment of a president. We have constantly debated impeachment of governors here. I've never heard at one given time when people come up and say we are targeting a particular community. We are not, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have been entertained this afternoon or the last two days with the defense alleging that the shareholding utterances made by the deputy president is that he was referring to the shareholding of a coalition agreement. And Mr. Speaker, we were demonstrated here that the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition agreed upon how they can be able to share different you know, positions in government. In fact, I thought they would say that the Speaker of this House was also negotiated. I believe when the Speaker of this House was proposed to be voted for, he was voted for by all the Senators. And never have I seen the Speaker giving preference to the people of the coastal region. So Mr. Speaker, I find those, I do, I'm not convinced by the defense that the shareholding being uttered by the Deputy President is based on a, sh a coalition agreement. Mr. Speaker, the defense attempted to respond to the allegation on ground eight, whereby they say that the utterances of the Deputy Speaker violate Section 132 of the Penal Code. It is important for us to know what Section 132 of the Penal Code says. It actually make it illegal to utter, print, or publish words or acts that brings into contempt the lawful authority of a public officer. The decision made by Justice Esther Minor in her capacity as a judge of the High Court is protected by the position that she holds. So it is a bit unsensical for the Deputy President to go out in public instead of following the due process of the law, to be able to go out and appeal the decision of that judge. Until today, Mr. Speaker, the coercion which was used to be able to return the 200 million shillings back to the Deputy President, that money must go back to the, um, the public. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President has got a forum. Article 240 of the Constitution puts him as one of the key members in the National Security Council. He has got a forum to be able to go out there and express his dissatisfaction with the, um, with the NSIS, NIS. When he calls a press conference and outright says that the Director General of the National Intelligence has completely brought that service into a halt, he was exposing the secrets of this country, and what he was doing is that he was actually saying that we have got no control. Mr. Speaker, if for anything, today I'll cast my vote based on various issues. One, on shareholding. Two, on the violation of Section 132 of the Penal Code. Three, on the issues of coercion, 
I listened to the gentleman from Kemset this afternoon. When he said that he had to sit for hours at ESCC to be able to come out with one bid board. One. He was called on the 11th. When the defense were trying to justify that, instead of actually reading the recommendation made by the Senate, they were going through the submissions of one of the witnesses who appeared before my committee of health. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm convinced. Senator Seki.